Hey everybody, it's Charles Morgan from Comic Week. I'm here at Alpha Comics with Brianna Beebe, and we have this week's selection of brand new comics. Uh, it's a on a volume basis, a little bit lighter than most weeks, but that doesn't mean there aren't a number of big titles that you're probably going to spend your money on this week. So what are you looking forward to? So, Archie versus Predator 2. Yes, there was a precursor to this. Yes, it is a thing that exists, and now they're doing it a second time. Uh, I mean, I feel like that's all you really did need to discuss, is Archie and Predator being in the same comic book. Uh, I love Archie when it does these kind of weird off-the-wall alternative type things um, and it actually is pretty popular especially like with series like Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and some of the more darker Archie type stuff uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff that's out in the Archieverse. So uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger had a heck of a time trying to defeat the Predator back in the movies uh, how mm -hmm. does how does Archie stand a chance? Make some deal with high school life like uh, I feel like any alien species wouldn't want to listen to like a psychology professor or something like that. Well, it just shows you that you can tuck out your problems. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one of my favorite series actually wrapping up this week, this is Black Hammer, Age of Doom by Jeff Lemire. It has a variant cover and this is the A cover. And this wraps up a story that's been basically uh, two, two and a half years in the making. Uh, great storytelling, great art, and uh, very poignant story. I love seeing Golden Gale and the choices she makes. Also, uh, Madam Dragonfly is the main character in this issue. I read it before we went live on the air and uh, it, it resolves perfectly. Pick up Black Hammer if you haven't already. You definitely want to pick up this issue if you've been reading the series because it's uh, it, it's a big good payoff and I appreciate uh, everything Jeff Lemire has done with this. Uh, another one that I'm pointing out is going to be one of the facsimile edition books. Uh, this one is a special issue that if you don't know what happens, there is a death. And it was very dramatic uh, for a lot of people because they just didn't expect it to happen. You see a lot of these kind of catchy covers where it's like, oh, someone might die. And then there's no follow through. So when there's follow through, it's like, oh, goodness. And this this was a death that actually lasted for at least a smidgen of time. Um, Which is an eternity in comic book terms. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, characters have a tendency to come back to life quite often. Um, but yeah, this was a super dramatic issue. Uh, I remember it reading it when I was younger, and Electro was one of one of many female characters that I was super fond of. Uh, so I was super, super intensely reading this, and then the ending was quite surprising. Yeah, I'm always happy that when you see these uh, retro uh, facsimile covers or issues come back with the original ads and everything. You get that sense of what it was like to read the comics, except with modern printing technology, modern paper. So when it's done well, it's sort of an improvement over the original. Uh, also, you don't have to go like seek them out like you know the in the five, ten, twenty dollar bin. Some of these comics are actually quite expensive. This one would be a little bit more, but it's a great iconic cover, and I'm glad. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's a really pretty book too especially if you want to have some of that kind of older style of stuff with a lot of really cool dimension into it. And plus, again, the ads are in it, which is always really nice. Yeah, I always wanted to buy those like plastic army men and yes. stuff that was <laughs> on the back. Uh, so the high level, uh, number uh, six comes out. This is a DC Vertigo, one of the relaunch titles uh, written by uh, Rob Sheridan and illustrated by Barnaby Baginda. Uh, I just uh, yesterday actually recorded a 40-minute conversation with Rob about this title, about working with Vertigo and uh, what he put into the story and what he plans to do with it uh, going forward. Of course, uh, the first six issues will be uh, collected in a trade. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it's, and it's really up in the air for some of these Vertigo titles, whether or not they will be continued under the DC banner, but a lot depends on the sales of the trade. Uh, of course, uh, you know, the creators uh, probably have mechanisms in which they can uh, get the rights back to their characters and take them to other publishers. But again, you know, this is like one of those things in limbo. Uh, there's this whole second story arc that has uh, been planned out and uh, will take place whether or not it's under DC or not. But this uh, wraps up the first story. I read this uh, two days ago and it just shocked the hell out of me uh, what happens in the story so this is a uh, adult reading uh, but it's uh, it's very good post post apocalyptic uh, thing and that uh, podcast interview we'll have with Rob we will post next week uh, and we will tie that podcast in with a giveaway we will be giving away a CGC 9.8 of high level number one the variant cover uh, when we do that 
So the next one for me is House of X. It is going to be the newest issue, which is going to be number five. Uh, this is one of the variant covers. They've been doing these pretty often with different characters and the uh, lovely plant friends. Um, this one, I, I, I will probably read the series once the trade comes out, simply because... You can actually get a hold of it. <laughs> get a hold of it. I don't have to worry about like being in sequential order and all that jazz. All, all of that lovely stuff. But it has been a very good series. There's been a lot of awesome covers. Yes, it was frustrating getting it in store and whatnot. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully, uh, <laughs> we, we shouldn't be running out too quickly. Uh, so. Yeah, and don't sleep on the Young Guns cover and also the Scotty Young cover is amazing. Yeah. Reminds me a little bit of Calvin and Hobbes, the way they did it. Uh, been, been digging uh, the last few issues of Batman, the City of Bane, uh, the story arc. Uh, the last issue, of course, we get Catwoman and Batman reuniting. They get to sort of do a little bit of Magnum P.I. hanging out on the beach, uh, making lovely with each other. Uh, they are back, and now they are teaming up to fight uh, crime together. Uh, I love this matchup. I love the way it's uh, what, their chemistry, the way Tom King writes it. So I'm happy to see it. This is the variant cover this week. There's the regular cover. It doesn't have the uh, heavy card stock. So Batman number 79 is out. And has a uh, 77 second printing come out? Yes, it will be coming out today. Uh, so that is a thing. And there's certain characters don't make it. Yeah, so you definitely want to check that out. If you didn't get a chance to get it the uh, the first time around, it sold out pretty much immediately. In fact, you guys had one copy that was... That I found today, which was we like, sold today. Yeah, I counted for as soon as it popped up. So there's that. And also another uh, title, which I've actually haven't promoted very much, but uh, Transformers from IDW in the last issue two is actually picking up a lot of steam. So if you decided you wanted to try it out and the first few issues really didn't go the way you wanted, there was that sort of a murder mystery that took forever to resolve. Uh, now things are actually starting to happen. The war for Cybertron is finally getting underfoot. So you may want to check it out. Uh, now that's Transformers number 12. And IDW will be rolling out a number of Transformers series to be uh, put out alongside this. There's already that Transformers Ghostbusters, who I didn't know the world needed, but that's out. And um, uh, speaking of IDW, they also have G.I. Joe number one this week, uh, which is a uh, very shocking opening scene for that mm -hmm. series. So I, I have it in this pile, but I kind of uh, jumped out of myself. So you might want to check that out, too. So one I'm going to be showcasing is Inferior 5. Uh, if you remember, there is a book that came out quite some time ago uh, with several very not-so-great superheroes that weren't exactly the best of the best. Uh, my personal favorite was the, the the character that was not going to appear in that comic. Um, I flipped through this, it looked vaguely more serious. Now that being said, it's like a post-apocalyptic type thing, so like it could also be making fun of the genre of post-apocalyptic. Don't know! Uh, didn't sit down and read it, just more flipped through to kind of see if like Dumb Bunny and some of the other characters were popping up, or if it seemed like it was a different retelling. Uh, so it seems interesting. Uh, Fun, fun, interesting thing to check out. And a great creative team. You got Giffen and Lemire on that book. So you know it's going to be filled with wit and a lot of humor. And uh, so it's, it's going to be the kind of thing that, you know, if you uh, want to have a, 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 you know, a good time and enjoy yourself reading a comic, it'd probably be something to check out. Yeah, and another thing I was going to showcase is Lady Mechanica. Uh, if you are a fan of, like, Victorian steampunk, this is actually a great comic for that. The art's actually really cool looking. Um, and it's a consistent uh, series. They, they, they divide it up based off of books. Uh, so even if you are super behind, you can always go with the trade trades because um, we're pretty deep into the series. But it's also one of those things that like, if you're only getting a couple of issues and it's all in the same storyline, it's pretty much encapsulated in what's going on. Uh, but it's a really cool aesthetic book. There's a lot of like mysticism-y type stuff and mystery associated with it. So it's a cool title if you're looking for something a little bit off the wall. Um, but still going to feel pretty decently action-packed. Yeah, it's, it's heavily stylized from the character design all the way down mm -hmm. to the lettering. Oh, yeah. uh, you guys couldn't keep this in stock when it came out. This is actually mm -hmm. issue two of uh, uh, Kieran Gillen's The Ke uh, Once in Future. Uh, this is uh, you basically a, a monster, a retired monster hunter, and her uh, son have to. Uh, 
fight monsters from the Arthurian legends, and uh, it, there's a the good family dynamic. Like the you know the the older monster hunter is like basically a grandmother aged character. She's hilarious. Oh, she's awesome. Uh, very very cool character. Uh, you know, Die uh, sold out of my, when it came out. It was like a, a huge hit, and. Uh, and this this is going to be, I think, something that people want. It's uh, the first print. Uh, the first uh, issue is already in what the fifth, sixth printing it's or the something. The third printing we're getting in. Right. Um, but I kind of like this trend of high fantasy kind of becoming more and more a thing in comics. Even then, the newest Magic: The Gathering set, uh, Throne of Eldraine, is going to be based off of fairy tales. So it's kind of cool as someone who is a fan of fairy tales, especially the spookier ones. Um, it's neat that a lot of this stuff is kind of getting more put back into pop culture. Yeah, and Dan Moore's art's really killer, so uh, that's cool. Uh, I've also liked uh, Tite from Titan Comics, another indie publisher, uh, Blade Runner. The first two issues mm -hmm. have been really good, uh, very highly stylized, usually have great covers. There's a sort oh, yeah. of sketch cover, there's a couple other variants that came out. Uh, so yeah, this is the third issue, and it's definitely something I've enjoyed. Uh, not only the first issue, the second issue, I look forward to getting this. will be one of the first things I read. Year of the Villain is continuing with the Lex Luthor uh, single uh, one shot issue. Um, sorry, restarting. Lex Luthor is getting uh, its. Lex Luthor is getting a one shot just like the other Year of the Villain characters. Uh, so if you're a fan of Lex Luthor and you want to kind of see what he's doing in the whole Year of Villain nonsense. This will be a focal point on him because that 25 cent issue that started off Year of the Villain, he was doing some crazy stuff. Uh, so I don't know how exactly that's going to be in his own book. Haven't really been keeping up with Year of the Villain simply because there's so much stuff going on. Absolute carnage in Year of the Villain I'm kind of avoiding for the moment simply so that like I can get a better idea of what's going on. Uh, so we shall see what this entails. Do you think Lex Luthor drives a Lexus? Also, I had to do this because Alex, when she saw this was going to be a book, sighed so deeply she became a part of the center of the earth. Uh, not a fan of Napoleon Dynamite. But yeah, that's a thing. That's going to be a thing. Uh, apparently him and Pedro aren't getting along very well uh, because apparently he wants him to be impeached. Not quite sure what's going down with that, but it's in comic book form. Um, you have all of the characters. The back has some cute little art to it, too. Uh, also out this week is Arrow number three. Now, in this issue, we have the appearance of two new characters. There's going to be Keystone and Sea Hunter. So uh, as this series gets on, they should take on bigger roles, and this will be your first chance to see them in action. Uh, also, uh, a 12-issue maxi series by uh, Matt Fraction, which has been hilarious so far. Of course, the event Leviathan uh, special they put out uh, leading up to that, where there's that Jimmy Olsen story, was like the first clue that they were going to have like shenanigans when this thing came out. Mm -hmm. But this has uh, got a great cover, great use of font. Who shot the decoy corpse of Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen? They basically give away what would have otherwise been a perfectly tropey plot mm -hmm. <laughs> on the cover. So you know if they've, if they've done that, that the, uh, the issue is going to be packed with all sorts of gags, and it's great. I, I love what they're doing with that. Oh, yeah, and they even referenced it in issue number one that he was apparently dead but not dead. So apparently they're, they're, they're kind of milking this for all of its worth, but in a fun way, not just in a, like, a Black Widow kind of way. Mm. So uh, Star Wars has been having one shots coming out with various characters, and this one's going to have Rey. There's also another one that has Rose in it as well that's going to be coming out this week. Um, who knows? Maybe this will shed some light on that whole bit in the trailer that looked kind of ominous. They don't have a du oh, the dark Rey. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? I mean, it could just be like in this scene, I think it's what, the third movie of the original trilogy where Luke has to face off Vader and he cuts his head and it's his own head. Who knows, it could be some sort of trip down that same type of thing. Yeah, I see a lot of people like theorizing what they think is going to happen in the final movie. I think it's all been wrong so far. But yeah. my, my favorite one is that Rey's actually the big bad and it's going to be uh, Kylo Ren who saves the uh, huh, light side. But, but uh, 
<laughs> See, my, my whole thing was I wanted Rey to end up being a gray Jedi so she brings true balance to the Force. Uh, because my interpretation was always that it's like yin and yang. If you don't have something of each, then existence can't be stabilized. Uh, so even though before the good guys won, the reason why they ended up eventually failing was because good was triumphing over evil, so it's still out of balance. Um, but I don't know if that's going to happen or not. That would be my personal if I was making a movie, but I'd probably suck at it, so who knows. I'm just hoping for a Banks return before it's all said and done. And we got Absolute Carnage number three, which comes out this week. This story has been like incredible and all the tie-ins uh, that have been coming out have also been really good. Uh, there's a major development for the uh, story in this issue that we've already seen. Can't spoil it for you, it wouldn't be fair, but it's definitely something you're gonna wanna pick up and uh, you won't see uh, a certain character the same way again. So, and then finally, speaking of seeing characters in a new way, J.J. Abrams and Henry Abrams uh, get to take on a new Spider-Man series, not set in the actual continuity, it's its own thing. A lot of uh, people have their eyes on this series mm -hmm. to see how it's gonna be. Abrams, of course, you know, does all these great Hollywood films. Uh, if you're into the uh, novelty variant covers, there is the uh, red cutout cover, which has a design should be very familiar to people. Uh, we had Hubert flip through this uh, before we started filming. He sort of spoiled us a little bit on what's going on, but it's a, I would say has a darker tone, more kind of an yeah, action yeah. movie tone. There, there's more intensity in the beginning. Uh, it's, it's one that you're gonna start at like Mach 10. Um, my own father pointed this book out to me. He was like, hey, so uh, if this like makes its way to me, uh, I will not be sad. Uh, so I will be picking one up. I just got to figure out what cover he lends. Right, right. Well, or if it's even around by the time. Uh... Well, I am subscribed to it, so. <laughs> so owning a store means I can make those decisions. Uh, also, uh, but we're going to get into the number ones in a minute. But there's two. Uh, two, two I guess well, I technically number ones here. Uh, there's a new uh, original graphic novel from Image called Simon Says, which is about uh, sort of a Nazi hunting spy set during World War II. You know for. You know, today's generation may have forgotten that Nazis are actually the bad guys in World War II. It's probably uh, worth reading. Uh, and also, I think for anybody who wants to understand how comic book stores work, uh, from a business perspective, so if you are a, a regular at a comic book shop, you can sort of get a sense of what, you know, your store goes through to keep the lights on, to sort of provide you that service, to curate uh, not, uh, trades and, and comics for you so that you, you can enjoy the hobby. Uh, if you're somebody who has always wanted to open up a comic book shop, I mean, Brianna can tell you it's a lot harder than it looks. Uh, but, but this book is uh, from the uh, comic book uh, 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 Legal Defense Fund. It's been put out uh, with a dark horse and it's uh, filled with very inf interesting information about how that side of the industry works. I think any good hobbyist would benefit from having some insight into how the sausage gets made because I think that just makes you a more savvy and sophisticated collector. And also it points out a few really important things like how important subscriptions are mm -hmm. for, for, uh, for to support your favorite comics and also to support your shop. Uh, how important it is for you to actually pick them up and pay for them in a timely manner. Uh, but also the other factors that go into the distribution model and the way the comic book industry works now. And uh, so I think the more knowledge you have, the better a collector you are. Yeah, and it's, it's a way for you to kind of have an inside look into it. Uh, especially because each store is going to be a little bit different, uh, but they all have kind of a standard that they have to go to simply to kind of maintain momentum. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out, speaking of Archie titles, I forgot about this. I have no idea what is in this. It looks really fancy and it looks interesting. So if you're on the more of the Archie horror type ilk, it's a gigantic book. It is bigger than my head uh, because that's how I determine if something is giant. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool, fun, interesting little special, super special magazine book thing. So let's pop through some of the number ones you might be seeing this week. And uh, we'll go over them one by one here. We got... Our G55, they did a, what was it, 41 previously, whereas during World War II. Uh, this is going to be the other Star Wars number one that's going to be a standalone issue. Rose Tico represent. Mm -hmm. And then there's Sister Powers. I have no idea anything about this book. It has fancy stars on it. Yeah, it's from uh, Keen Spot. We also have uh, Marvel Black Panther and the Agents of Wakanda. They get their own standalone book, and that's cool. Very cool mm -hmm. characters there. Uh, Jim Zub is doing the writing. Uh, Forever Maps. This looks really neat. I love the cover. I didn't get a chance to flip through the book to see. 
Yeah, and that's from Scout Comics. Mm -hmm. So that's probably going to have a low print run. Uh, DC Comics has a new uh, six issue miniseries, uh, Flash Forward. Mm -hmm. And we have. G.I. Joe Wanted. Uh, Charles, you mentioned that earlier. Yep. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Obey Cobra. Or don't. And buy the G.I. Joe comic. And we have from Aftershock Comics, you have we, uh, You Are Obsolete, a new number one. This is a horror thriller. A woman receives an invitation to go to a town that is run by the children. We don't really know what their motivations are or why they're inviting this woman to the town, other than the fact that they have developed an app, a killer app, if you will, that allows them to take out anybody over 40 at will. And a kind of uh, setup reminds me a little bit of the 1970s uh, suspense film Logan's Run which I don't know if you've seen but uh, similar thing once you got to 40 or <laughs> that was it for you so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out of course Aftershock revels in delicious horror and uh, this is a new title from them. for our giveaway this week we are giving away a pretty important modern comic mm -hmm. this is Batman number 497 this was uh, published in July 1993 I remember it like it was yesterday this is the third printing uh, mini printings of this so this is a CGC 9.6 of Batman uh, Nightfall number 11 where Batman gets his bat broke uh, where Batman gets his back broken by Bane so your bat hurts Batman <laughs> is that a good Bane not a good Bane so anyway, we'd like to thank everybody who liked the video last week. We'll have your names appearing here as we sort of wave our arms kind of crazily like. And we'll be back next week. Like I said, we'll have that podcast for you. And we'll have another new comic book day video. And then, I don't know, three hours after I finish putting that online, I'm going to be on a plane to Sarasota. So that'll be, that'll, that'll be the life I live next week. So uh, for Comic Week, I'm Charles. This is Brianna from Alpha. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks.